speak in opposition to the um, amendment. In fact, earlier, had I been able to make a statement, I was going to um, offer my strong congratulations to the chairman and the ranking member uh, for really providing uh, strong um, DBE participation uh, requirements and for accountability. That is a reporting requirement now from the states. I think one of the things that we learned uh, a couple of years ago, uh, not under the uh, chairman's leadership of Mr. Oberstar, is that when the federal government had to come to us as they did a number of times, I remember Secretary LaHood uh, coming here to report on their disadvantaged business uh, participation, they were unable to do that with any degree of consistency because of the lax reporting requirements um, under, the, under the current law. And so I actually believe uh, that we're going to know a lot more about um, what is happening with these uh, disadvantaged businesses and about the business that they are in fact uh, getting. And I think that um, the gentlemen's, given uh, the documentation that this committee has received um, and that is articulated in the provisions in the bill, um, that uh, we are not nearly where we need to be when it comes to disadvantaged business participation. That is particularly true with uh, women-owned businesses in the um, transportation uh, and infrastructure space. It is particularly true with other um, uh, minorities, historically disadvantaged um, businesses. And so I want to salute the leadership of this committee for recognizing that, for some accountability, and uh, for having uh, very strong DBE um, uh, participation uh, language in the underlying bill. And I would st strongly object to the amendment that's been put forward. And with that, I yield. Any other members wish to be heard? Ms. Norton.